long before Pacific Coast Highway was constructed and container ships sailed into the port of Los Angeles. The region, now known as the South Bay, was just a simple stretch of land, perfectly positioned along the Pacific Ocean. In 1851, the 21-year-old Phineas Banning left his home on the East Coast and arrived at a tiny port called San Pedro. At the time, the port consisted of just a shack and a rickety pier owned by the Sepulveda family. The energetic young Banning, however, saw visions of an international port. It wouldn't be easy, but before long, his dreams would come true. Every person and every place has a story, a unique narrative of experiences and events that create a distinct history. Remembering our story is important because our past provides perspective for our present and direction for our future. In order to know where you're going, you first have to know where you've been. In 1858, Phineas Banning acquired land to build a harbor. Five years later, Banning named the new city Wilmington, after his birthplace in Wilmington, Delaware. Shortly after, in 1864, Banning built a permanent residence for his family in Wilmington, symbolizing Banning's confidence in the future of his community. The landscape of the region would see many changes over the next few decades. Channels were dredged, breakwaters were built, docks were constructed, and an extensive network of stage and freight routes were established. It would take much perseverance, but eventually Banning's dreams were realized. Soon, his simple stretch of land grew into one of the world's largest international ports. Though often overlooked, Wilmington, the heart of the harbor, now spans 9.14 square miles and is home to 54,000 people. This is the place that God chose to raise up a church with international influence, a church whose sound would be heard around the world. The story of Harbor Christian Center begins in the 1930s. God spoke to Helen Carl and her husband Norman about a place called Wilmington. He wanted them to build a church there. The reason the church was founded, Sister Carl had a vision, she had a dream, and the Lord showed her the dock workers. And dock workers, that was before Longshoremen, before the union was organized, and, and dock workers really had it hard. It was, it was, a, it was hard work for little pay. She saw them and so she just felt compelled to, to move from their place in Long Beach and move to Wilmington and begin the church. She literally started uh, the church in the early 30s during the Great Depression as a soup kitchen and just to feed people and not only dock workers but cannery workers and, and anyone who just needed help and so uh, what she would do is bring them in and feed them and, and, and preach the gospel to them. She was a dynamic Pentecostal Holy Ghost preacher. And people began to get saved and God began to work in people's lives and that's how the church uh, began. Originally called E Old Time Gospel Mission, Pastor Helen and a small congregation first met in an old grocery store building located in East Wilmington. The crowds continued to grow until there was standing room only in the church. The presence of God was so strong that unsaved people ran up to the altar even before the sermon was preached. Then, one Sunday morning during service, a telegram arrived informing the church that their building was scheduled to be torn down. A new four-lane highway, now known as Pacific Coast Highway, was being built and the church was right in its path. After much prayer and a series of miraculous events, Pastor Helen and the congregation were able to rebuild the church on the side of the new highway. It was truly a labor of love as dozens of church members volunteered their time and resources. E Old Time Gospel Mission was a vibrant church filled with the power of God. Not even World War II could dampen the move of the Holy Spirit. Because of Wilmington's close proximity to the naval base, the area came under the blackout rules. When air raid sirens sounded, lights had to be dimmed. In order to hold church services, windows had to be covered, and only one candle was allowed inside. 
Even under these precarious conditions, the church continued to thrive. It's so important to remember where we came from so that we can be grateful, we can be thankful, and we can know who did it for us. The gospel mission also demonstrated an innovativeness not found in many churches. For instance, a loudspeaker was installed outside of the church which allowed people to listen to the worship and the teaching while seated in their cars. Many lives were impacted for Jesus through this unconventional method. I think remembering our stories, it's important because of where we've been and where we are and where God's taking us. And that is important because he has, he has brought us so far. God has been so incredibly faithful. That story and, and, and our conversion, the way that God has touched our life, that is a story that the world needs to know. They, they're looking for answers. They're looking for, for people to, to um, give them hope and your story is important. Your story is critical to the life of somebody. I can share you know, a story with someone, with a mom who has a son who's lost. And I can tell that mom, you know what, there is hope because I was just like your son. And there is a God that's able to reach down in the gutter and pick you up and do something great in your life. After 10 years of pastoring, Helen and Norman resigned to go into evangelistic work. Pastor Joe Watkins led the congregation for two years. Then, in 1947, Pastor Herbert Ezell, along with his wife Edna and their two young sons, Harold and Don, moved to Wilmington. Pastor Herbert became the new shepherd of the church. This transition would mark the start of a new chapter in the church's story. In 1947, Pastor Herbert and Edna Ezell moved from Anaheim to become the new leaders of the growing church in East Wilmington. Even though Pastor Herbert was aware of the dangerous and tough conditions in the city, he saw the region's value and followed the call of God. My parents were uh, called to pastor the church and um, it was on the east side of Wilmington on Blinn and PCH for one year. My dad knew that we would outgrow the current facility, so the congregation bought a piece of property at 1551 Wilmington Boulevard. And a year later, we started building. It was built by volunteer labor and many, many hours. And it was a fun, fun season where everybody, the whole church family came together and built this exciting new building for us. With a new location came a new name, Boulevard, Assembly of God. There were frequent prayer meetings and revival services, often lasting into the early morning hours. The worship and preaching were always lively and spirit-filled. While Pastor Herbert taught the uncompromising Word of God, he also understood the difference between biblical principles and man-made religious traditions. Through his ministry, the old ways of thinking began to change, but the gospel message maintained its integrity. In 1961, Pastor Herbert took a sabbatical and Pastor Leonard Nipper led the church until 1970, when Pastor Herbert returned, filled with the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. A dynamic new era in the life of the church started, and it was confirmed with mighty miracles, signs, and wonders. In 1973, the name of the church was officially changed to Harbor Christian Center. God used Pastor Herbert to create a space where people from all backgrounds, ethnicities, and ages felt welcomed and accepted. My dad used to call Harbor Christian Center a chef salad, a little bit of everything. The 70s at Harbor Christian Center were characterized by life-changing teachings from guest speakers such as Derek Prince, Kenneth Copeland, and Kenneth Hagen. In 1974, Pastor Herbert accepted an invitation to teach about the Holy Spirit in Los Mochis, Mexico. During this time of ministry, Father Lomeli, a Roman Catholic priest, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. We ended up buying a church plane because they would go down there so often and minister. And 
the bishops got mad because of his opening the door to the Holy Spirit. And so they would, they would teach outside in buildings or in homes. And there are probably thousands of, of Catholic b believers who are spirit-filled and, and worship God in spirit and truth as a result of that one invitation. Even after surviving a plane crash, the team continued to minister in Mexico following the purchase of a new airplane. Pastor Herbert always saw the importance of investing in the next generation. In 1978, his vision for a Christian school was realized when Happy Harbor Preschool opened its doors with eight students. It soon grew into Pacific Harbor Christian School, including grades K through 12. Pastor Herbert died unexpectedly on September 9, 1986. A few weeks later, his son and daughter-in-law, Don and Linda Ezel, became the new pastors of the church. Under Pastor Don and Linda's leadership, Harbor Christian Center continued to be a beacon of hope for many. The most valuable gift to the world, Jesus, was being found in Wilmington. The good that can come out of Wilmington is a revival that not only reaches Wilmington, the South Bay, California, the states, the world for Jesus, and it could start right here uh, in our city. It was vision that drove young Phineas Banning to build the Port of Los Angeles and establish the city of Wilmington. It was vision that fueled Pastor Helen and Norman Carl to pioneer the church that would become Harbor Christian Center. A God-given vision is the roadmap for our lives, providing a picture of what tomorrow can be. In 1986, God gave Donnie Zell a vision of a church that moved in miracles, signs, and wonders. At the time, Don had no intention of pastoring a church. Before long, however, that would all change. Following the unexpected passing of Pastor Herbert, Don and Linda Ezell began leading Harbor Christian Center in September of 1986. Well, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. A vision, I believe, is something that keeps us focused. For instance, when, when God called Linda and I to Wilmington from Arkansas, there was, a, there was a word that God gave us. He said, you're going to move. We came here, and during the challenging times of transition, transition's difficult. During the transitional time of after my dad passed away and then I became pastor of, of Harbor Christian Center. It was the vision and the word from God that kept us putting one foot in front of each other. Through the years, the church stayed true to its Pentecostal roots and maintained a strong community involvement. For instance, in 1994, the congregation purchased a box truck that was converted into a portable stage. Named the Sidewalk Sunday School Truck, this vehicle became the platform for many neighborhood outreaches to children and families. We've always been very sensitive to our community. And one of the things that my heart desire is, is that we really become a church that reaches our community for Christ. There are people by the thousands of people, they need someone to love them. Harbor Christian Center hosted a variety of events for the community, including Harvest Celebration, a family-friendly Halloween alternative, and National Night Out, an event honoring our local police officers and firefighters. I started attending a Harbor Christian Center in 2002. We had started looking for a different church to attend, and, and so what we did was on a Wednesday night, I'll never forget, it was a Wednesday night, we said, we're gonna go check out Harbor Christian Center. And so we arrived at church a little early and uh, we were greeted at the door by a gentleman. And uh, you know, he started asking us questions about our kids and what age groups. And, and uh, he took our older ones to youth and our boys, he uh, had someone else take them to Royal Rangers. And, and then when I get inside the church, I didn't realize, but 
the person that was actually at the door greeting us was the pastor of the church. It was Pastor Don, and uh, it just it was a, it was an impression upon me that I thought here is this 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 man of God, this pastor, this shepherd of a church, and uh, he's taking the time to greet someone at the door and go out of his way to make us feel comfortable and welcome and in love. And I'll never forget the first service I attended. Uh, it was so God. It was just you know you know those times when you're just going through stuff and you're. You're, you're kind of wondering what's happening and what's God doing and is this our end or, or what's going to happen and what's our future like and that service uh, was just, uh, it was an amazing service. It was, it, was, it was worship, we were worshiping, but before we knew it, it was the whole service. It ended up being just a total worship service. The pastor never got up and, and spoke. Uh, it was just a time with God. It was almost like a refreshing and I remember just just getting in the presence of God and weeping. And I know there's so many people in our church that experience that same exact experience where there's just this refreshing, there's just this cleansing during our time of praise and worship, just this entering into the presence of God. And we left there that night feeling like, wow, we, God is not done with us, that God is still working on us, that God still has a plan for us. And the really funny thing about it is we never visited any other churches. We made Harbor Christian Center, our church from that day forward. Pastor Louie, along with countless other individuals, had his vision restored at the spiritual hospital called Harbor Christian Center. My vision for Harbor Christian Center is to continue to reach souls for Christ. Wilmington is surrounded by every possible culture. And to me, that's a mission field. God has brought the world to, to Southern California. So there's a tremendous opportunity to win souls for Christ, to make a difference in the kingdom of God. We have a vision to reach our city, uh, to put legs to Christ and, and just go out in a tangible way. The call of the church is to serve the community. If vision is a map, then mission is the vehicle. Harbor Christian Center is on a mission for Christ. We have decided that we don't just want to hear stories of God's goodness, we want to be the ones telling them. We have decided that we don't just want to read about revival, we want to experience it. We have decided that we don't just want to go to church, we want to be the church. We have decided that the 9.14 square miles of Wilmington is an epicenter for heaven to touch earth. Harbor Christian Center has always been a church on the move, offering countless opportunities for involvement in ministry. Some of the early memories of, of Harbor Christian Center for me and my family was, uh, it was something for everyone. My daughters were in their teenage years, so they were involved in youth, and our boys were in, in Royal Rangers, and I, I became an usher, my, my wife was greedy, my wife joined the choir. That's the beauty of Harbor Christian Center. We have an army of, of men and women who caught the vision and who rolled up their sleeves and now are part of the uh, workings of, the, of Harbor Christian Center. And then some of the productions that were put on, my, my kids were in youth productions that were presented and, and it was almost like the glue that kind of glued us to the church and how we got involved in it and, 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 and we became part of the family uh, uh, right away. Even after two fires, one in 2007 and the other in 2008, destroyed most of the church building, the mission of the church was undaunted. In fact, Harbor Christian Center flourished and experienced great growth. Services were held in a tent for nine months as the sanctuary and classrooms were being repaired. In 2009, the church family rejoiced as they opened the doors to the newly remodeled building. God had brought beauty from ashes. Harbor Christian Center has not only impacted the South Bay region, but has also had international influence. Through missionaries and a live internet broadcast, the church has reached all 50 states and over 40 different countries. But the mission has only just begun. Without a vision, people perish. But without people, the vision perishes. So we're asking 
you, the congregation, to partner with us, we're gonna accomplish the mission by joining arm in arm, by partnering with each other and with God, and going out and making a difference. Through many ups and downs, God has remained faithful to share His story and carry out His mission through Harbor Christian Center. But God is so wanting Wilmington, Harbor Christian Center, the family of God, and the entire world to be so sensitive to His, His voice that all He has to do is whisper and we'll know exactly where to go. Because at the end of that where to go, there's gonna be someone who needs a touch of the Master's hand through these hands. God's looking for partners. God's looking for a partnership uh, to partner with Him to make things happen. That's what He did throughout the whole Bible. He chose people, gave them a vision, uh, and, and the people had to decide whether to partner with God or not to make that vision happen. When Pastor Carl, Sister Carl, uh, began Harbor Christian Center, it was to reach the dock workers. And that vision has never waned in time. We still are focused on reaching our community. I'm believing God for revival. Linda and I have prayed over Wilmington for 30 years. And I believe that the future of Harvard Christian Center is incredible because the anointing of God that was there in 1930, in fact, one of the, the pastor, Sister Carl, had come to the church just before she died and I was pastoring, and as she sat there in the, in the audience, she was just crying, and she said in her, with tears in her eyes, and in her voice, she says, I am, I am seeing the fulfillment of my dream today. She saw that the church, that the Holy Spirit was welcomed, and it was something that she was praying for until the day she died. Such a rich Pentecostal heritage that we have to be careful to guard it, that we cannot lose that anointing that God placed upon Harbor Christian Center. Our future's in His hands but he's given us the legs to walk and to be all that we can be in the human side and he adds the super side and it becomes a supernatural walk. That's what I wanna see in every one of us, every one of us in the church, from the youngest person to the, I wanna see revival in the children. I wanna see their hearts so tender to the things of God they prophesy, they lay hands on the sick. It's not just for the adults. The anointing of God is for every person and every walk of life. We talked about your purpose. We talked about uh, remembering where we came from. We talked about uh, why our church was founded. And, and this is why we're here to make a difference in Wilmington and, and the South Bay and the world for Jesus. I want to be able to look back and say, thank you, Lord. We heard your voice and we followed your path. And now look at what you've done. I want to be speechless that God, you did it. You showed up because we were faithful. <laughs>